Robocop Rogue City was released just last week, and I'll be honest, it gave me so many nostalgic vibes that I've actually been re-watching the movies, and for the most part, they still hold up pretty well. Apart from Robocop 2, that's still terrible. Now, when the game released, we published a video testing 36 different GPUs to see how they performed in a variety of settings and resolutions. Well, today is all about CPU performance to see what ones can handle the game, what ones can't, and what ones may need you to tweak the settings to get more of a smoother gameplay experience. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I'm never gonna be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So when we looked at the GPU performance, we took a brief look at the game, the quality settings, and analyzed the various levels and how they differ in terms of visual quality. So if you've not already taken a look at that, I definitely invite you to go and do so to get a better idea as to how the game performs in general. Today, however, is all about CPU performance and what level of processing power you're going to need to be able to play the game because it's actually quite demanding in areas at various levels of graphical presets and resolutions. So I guess with that out of the way, let's just get into the numbers. Now for our tests, we tried to keep all of our platforms from both AMD and Intel as similar as possible, with the only differences coming by way of the memory, as AM4 uses DDR4, while AM5 and Z790 use DDR5. For our AM4 system, we used a Gigabyte X570S Aorus Master Motherboard with 32GB of Kingston Fury Renegade RGB 3600MHz CL16 memory. For our Intel test system, we used the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme Motherboard, and for our AM5 system, we used the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master, with both DDR5 based systems using 32GB of Team Group T Force Delta RGB 7600MHz CL36 memory. You'll also notice in our test that each CPU used varying speeds of memory as we spent quite a bit of time seeing kind of what each CPU was able to do in terms of memory speed while remaining stable, especially now that AM5 can be pushed further than 6000 MHz quite easily in some cases. And for those who are worried about us not using the sweet spot 6000 MHz CL30 memory for our AMD testing, we are working on some content looking at the 7800X3D and how it stacks up at different speeds though we will look at some memory scaling in this game a little later on. But if you want to see more, then definitely make sure you're subscribed for that in the very near future. Now for our graphics card and to make sure that we have no GPU bottlenecks, we use the Inno3D RTX 4090 iChill X3OC with the GeForce 545.92 driver. And all of our testing was done on the latest version of Windows 11 and the latest respective motherboard BIOS versions available at the time. Also, if you appreciate the huge amounts of work that we put into our testing, especially these big group tests that take a very, very long time, then you can support us over on Patreon, where you'll also get a ton of cool perks while helping us out at the same time in bringing you this type of content. The link for all that great stuff is, as always, down below. So with that aside, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Starting things off with 1080p and on the low preset, and straight away we have a battle between the Ryzen 7 7800X3D from AMD and Intel's latest flagship, the i9-14900K, which both come in almost identically, with a margin of error 1fps between them, though the Intel CPU does come in with better 1% lows. Beyond this, the rest of the chart is filled with Intel processors until the 5800X3D and Ryzen 9 7950X spoil the party at 130 and 128 FPS respectively. Sitting just under this is the i5-12600K and then the rest of the AMD parts, with the 7000 series sitting ahead of the complete rest of the Ryzen 5000 series, with the 5600X taking the bottom spot at 96 FPS. As we move up to 1440p, the i9-14900K manages to take the lead over AMD's 7800X3D by a pretty impressive 11%. And even then, the i7-14700K still manages to beat AMD's gaming flagship by 2 frames per second. Again, as we move down the chart, Intel hold the majority of the top spots, only being broken up again by the Ryzen 7 5800X3D and Ryzen 9 7950X, which matches the performance of the i7-12700K. 
Beyond that, the 12600K still sits towards the middle of our results, and then the Ryzen 7000 series follows, and the older AM4 CPUs tail off towards the bottom of the charts, though still with more than playable frame rates. Moving up to 4K, there's still quite a big variance between certain processors, with an almost segmented upper half between the i9-14900K and i7-14700K, which come in identically, all the way down to the Ryzen 5 7600, which comes in with still some impressive results. While the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D manages a few extra frames compared to the rest of the stack, though all other AMD and Intel CPUs come in around the same 89-94 FPS margin, showing that unless you're using something typically high-end, you're going to get similar performance no matter what at 4K. GPU dependent, of course. As you move up in quality preset to medium, at 1080p we now see the 7800X 3D coming in a little stronger than the Intel Core i9-14900K with a pretty healthy margin of around 9%. Beyond this, Intel still managed to hold the majority of the top spots, with only the 5800X 3D breaking things up a little at 127 frames per second. Moving further down in the Zen 4 lineup sits just under the middle part between our results with some respectable scores, as things then kind of taper off a little again with the 5000 series Ryzen processors at the bottom, though still within the realms of completely playable frame rates. Again, as we move up to 1440p, the top results narrow closer to each other, though the 7800X 3D does still manage a marginal lead of just a single frame, though Intel still consistently come in with better 1% lows. Again, Intel command most of the top results, though the 5800X 3D is still in the mix, just between the i9-12900K and i7-12700K at 124 FPS, which isn't bad considering we're at 1440p on the medium preset. The Ryzen 5000 series still remain at the bottom of the chart as expected, with the 5800X still sitting at 91fps, which is identical to how it did at the lower 1080p resolution. When we move up to 4K, we do see a sizeable drop in performance across a lot of the processors, now coming in with similar figures now that we're more GPU limited, and all come in with a playable frame rate above 80fps. The Ryzen 5000 series stack did move up the charts a bit, but with just a couple of FPS between them, there really isn't much in it. Though you could argue that the real telling factor here is in the 1% lows, where Intel again do come out consistently stronger. No matter which CPU, you'd be hard pressed to tell any of the configurations apart, especially if using a GPU like the RTX 4090, like we did today. At 1080p on the high preset, there really isn't much going on in comparison to the medium preset, with only small dips in performance going from one quality setting to the next. For instance, the 7800X 3D still tops the results, but only sees a 5% decrease in frame rate going from medium, so you may as well crank the quality up as you're still well above what's deemed as playable. Beyond that, the likes of the i9-14900K comes in with an identical average from medium to high of 151 FPS, showing that we are somewhat CPU limited across both resolutions, with the 3DV cache on the 7800X 3D really making the only slight difference in the uplifted performance. Moving further down, it's a very similar story, only a few percent drops in performance for most CPUs until we get to the bottom where we're talking less than a 5% drop, and still at very comfortable levels of performance. So again, if I was playing with, let's say, a lower end CPU with a higher end GPU, I'd definitely be looking to ramp up the quality settings while not losing too much on the bottom line. Moving up to 1440p, we see much bigger changes in performance with the likes of the 7800X 3D, which still tops our chart, losing around 20% performance in the averages. So really, considering Robocop isn't the fastest paced game around, that's the decision that you can make as to if you want better visuals or higher performance. Though as mentioned, you're probably going to be unlikely to even notice in the first place. Now everything from that point down to around the Ryzen 5 7600 is very close in performance, though the 5800X 3D that sits in the middle does suffer quite a bit in the 1% lows when compared to what Intel have on offer. Then looking at the bottom of our results, the 5600X is still faring pretty well as we only see a single FPS difference going from 1080p to 1440p at 88fps, which is still a pretty respectable result, though it's unlikely you'd be pairing a 5600X with an RTX 4090. But obviously for the purposes of CPU testing, we want to eliminate any GPU bottleneck for these tests. At 4K on high, we do become extremely GPU limited, even when using the top tier RTX 4090. And between the top result and the bottom, you won't be able to tell any difference, especially as not only are the averages within a few frames per second of each other, but the 1% lows were too. With both the i9-14900K and i9-13900K coming in just a smidge stronger, but nothing that would be noticeable. We also find the likes of the Ryzen 5 5600X comes in with the worst figures in terms of lows, but again, we're talking single digit performance. 
What is interesting and shows a testament to how intensive this game can be is while we're well above what could be deemed as playable frame rates, between 1440p and 4K, the drop in performance is quite significant at 38% when talking about the 7800X 3D. Though obviously this dwindles down the further down the stack we go. Finally, looking at the Epic preset, and again, we see some really interesting results when comparing how things were on the high quality preset. We're still quite severely limited here as performance aligns pretty well with what we saw on high, with only a 3% decrease in performance on the likes of the 7800X 3D, 2% on the i7-13700K, the same 2% on the Ryzen 9 5950X, and everything else basically comes in identically or within such small differences that you wouldn't even notice. So again, this further instills if you're using a high-end GPU like we are, you really should just max out the settings as far as your GPU will let you, because it's really not too reliant on the CPU, as even the Ryzen 5 5600X still manages to come in at a strong 89 FPS. So really you'd have no issues in running the game regardless, though you will be more limited by what your GPU has to offer. Moving up to 1440p Epic, and we see larger drops in performance between resolutions, more so than what we see from changing quality settings. There's still some variance between each processor, but only really when we look at the Ryzen 5000 series along with the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D and Ryzen 5 7600. Beyond that, everything from the Ryzen 5 7600 all the way up to the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D will see performance that will satisfy any hardcore gamer. And again, you'll be hard pressed to see any difference visually in terms of performance. Though in any kind of more intensive scenes, it could be argued that the likes of the 14900K will lend itself to a better experience over the 5800X 3D for instance, as the 1% lows differ quite dramatically. Though if you're paying that much more for the i9, you'd expect the experience to be better anyway. Then, as we lastly move up to 4K, again we're at the mercy of our GPU, which is shown as the Epic preset doesn't really lose all that much performance from high, with between an 8 to 9% dip in performance. So again, you may as well just push your settings to the limit, though that limit will be based on your GPU's respective performance. So I'd say anything above 60 FPS is going to be where you want gameplay to be, and on 4K Epic we still manage to get that with every CPU tested, all the way from the high-end Ryzen 7000 series gaming CPUs through to the whole Intel stack, all the way down to the lower-end Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. And apart from the Ryzen 5 5600X, which suffered somewhat in the 1% lows, the rest of the parts tested all came in with very similar results. So it's definitely kind of safe to say that Robocop Rogue City is more GPU dependent than CPU dependent. Now again, because one of our latest videos created a bit of divide in the comments in regards to memory speeds, especially in terms of AMD, I ran some tests for memory scaling to see how things stack up. It's here, we're at 1080p on the i9-14900K, we do see an uplift in performance of around 6% when moving from 4800MHz memory to anything faster than 6000MHz, regardless of timings. And then with a larger increase of 9% on the lower end i5-13600K, with a small but unnoticeable bump by either going faster or with tighter timings. The big one though, being the 7800X 3D, is where we notice the smallest gain from 4800MHz to 6000, at just 2%, and then another 1% when tightening the timings to CL30. In this case though, speed trumps timing with an extra margin of error performance, while on the Ryzen 5 7600 the jumps are much bigger, with an 18% improvement when bumping up the speed beyond 6000MHz from 4800, though again, speed manages to beat timings, but only by a small margin. At 1440p, where the CPU is slightly less reliant, we find that the i9-14900K, i5-13600K and 7800X 3D see no real benefit from faster or tighter memory, while the Ryzen 5 7600, which is obviously less in terms of performance, sees a sizeable gain of 14% when moving from a 4800MHz kit to a 6000MHz kit. Tightening up the timings gives an extra 2% more performance on top, and then an extra 2% on top of that if utilising 7600MHz memory. Lastly, at 4K there really isn't any ground to cover, as all CPUs tested came in nigh on identically, with a margin of error difference between them, but nothing that would ever be noticeable. So if gaming, and especially in this game, at 4K, as you're more reliant on GPU power, faster or tighter memory really would be a waste of money. So one more thing that I wanted to check out was CPU scaling on the two flagship gaming processors, the 14900K and Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, to see exactly how they adapt and react to various settings and resolutions, which then allows us to look at how well the game is optimised and to find the middle ground for visuals and performance. 
On the 7800X3D, we do see that things scale pretty well between 1080p, 1440p and 4K, along with the settings too, where the biggest differences come from moving up from the medium quality preset to high across all three resolutions. So really, depending on the GPU you're using, you may want to look at overall performance and decide if it's right for you to move up to have better quality visuals and in return, what kind of drop in performance you're likely to see. Though on a 7800X3D with an RTX 4090, the world really is your oyster. As we look at the 14900K, the results aren't as clear cut as at 1080p, while we do see a 12% drop in performance when going from low to medium, beyond that we're clearly limited, as moving up to high sees no difference in the averages, though it does affect the 1% lows by around 3%. The higher resolutions don't see anything similar and instead see sizable drops as you move up in quality, which range between 7 to 16%, though 4K sees a huge drop from low to medium of 31%. But again, at 4K, this is more the fault of the GPU than it is of the CPU. So some pretty interesting results overall, and a somewhat well-optimized game, at least in terms of CPU usage. Though if you want to find out more about the GPU side of things, then definitely check out our video on that. Now, CPU testing is always a kind of fickle thing, because for the most part, our eyes should be on the 1080p results, though this can sometimes stretch beyond that. And if gaming with a high-end GPU like we had here with our RTX 4090, you have to think about the average type of consumer who will be using that type of setup. And if they'll really be gaming at 1080p, which is a big resounding no, unless they're chasing higher frame rates of which Robocop just isn't about that life. What's clear to see is that any CPU from the last few years is going to hold up extremely well at any quality setting and any resolution, depending on the GPU that you pair it with. Even the lower end Ryzen 5000 parts did well and hit a form of wall when going through the various configurations, instead of just falling off a cliff. While the high end was clearly limited in what it was able to do, especially when you see the likes of the 14900K coming in identically at 1080p medium and 1080p high, which to me is a no brainer as to why you'd run medium in the first place, especially considering it doesn't look all that nice. And if you have the headroom for it, I definitely advise trying to push things as far as they can go. In terms of AMD versus Intel, they both fared very well. And while the 7800X3D did come out on top, I guess, it wasn't by any huge margins, and Intel clearly did better in the 1% lows. So you can take from that what you will, as there's, I guess, arguments for both of them. The other side of it, in terms of memory, well, it didn't really make all that much difference once you were up to 6,000 megahertz memory speeds, especially on the AMD side. So the age old argument for having 6,000 megahertz CO30 memory is kind of out the window. And while you could tune the secondary timings to eke a little more performance out, in all honesty, the majority of gamers for one just aren't going to do that. And the time and effort just won't make it worth it. The juice just isn't worth the squeeze. Now what is plain to see is that no matter what CPU you go with, you're going to have a great experience. And if like me, you grew up watching the Robocop movies, I actually don't think you're going to be all that bothered by quality and performance because you're going to be too engrossed in what's going on in the game. And without kind of giving too much away, it really is an amazing game with a very, very good storyline. So yeah, that about does it for this one. If you liked it, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and want to show your support, you can by heading over to Patreon, where you'll get a ton of cool benefits, including monthly live streams, exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, and much, much more. The link for all that great stuff is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.